Oh. Testing. We've got to keep an eye on this camera because it likes to glitch out on me. <laughs> and what I'm going to do, yeah. and I'm, I never edit anything out, so all of this will go in it. Obviously, I'm abs of October Red. Right. It's really nice to meet yourself, but I need you to introduce yourself. But before we do that, we're at the GBM presser in Sheffield. And what a, what a lovely presser. And I get to meet nice, fine characters like yourself. Has someone paid you to say that? <laughs> you must not know about me. He was your mate that ate all the quiches. Oh, was it? Yeah, he's still scoffing his face. Yeah. Um, no, it is, it's really nice here. Yeah, GBM always put a good show on. And um, they, 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 they spend the time and the effort they put in, you know, the press conferences, the wanes, everything like that. So, yeah, it's a really nice venue. If I do say so myself, from Sheffield. My name's Red Johnson. I'm from Sheffield. Yeah, I'm on October Red. Like you know, it's it, the stars are aligned. The stars are aligned. The stars are aligning. That's what it is. That's what it is. So yeah, um, no, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the day. It's nice. Talk to us a bit about you and, and you getting into boxing. Because uh, forgive me, um, I haven't seen you perform before. That could be construed in many ways. But we're talking about in the ring. That yeah, could even yeah. be construed as even worse. Yeah, yeah, in the yeah. boxing ring. In the, in the boxing ring. In the boxing ring. Well, you. Like you to lower the top. Yeah, yeah. You like me. Um, you're going to have to come on February 9th. You know, I always perform. And, uh, you know, I'm 4-0 at the minute. I had, a, I had a, a decent amateur career. And even in amateur career, people like to come and watch me fight. You know, I, I always say you can jab and move or you can fight and groove. And, you know, it depends what I feel like at night. I can jab and not get it. Or I can stand there and have a fight, have a bit of a dance and put a show on. And, you know, that's what I like to do. So we'll see how we feel. But I'm feeling a fight for this one. You know what I like? I like um, uh, your confidence and the way that you almost, you're almost like rapping. You're very poetic in the way that you describe yourself. You did it when you sat at the, the top table, I like to call it. There's, there's something, you, like a, a natural showman. It was impressive. It made me look up. Right, okay, yeah. It's, you know what, I, I tend to do it and I don't even know I'm doing it. I read a lot of books and things like that and I'm, I'm picking up words that I don't even know. I didn't say oh, too spectacular today. I just said, you know, I'm... Uh, you're going to see some hot stepping and some Burberry repping, some body wrecking and some chin checking. That's what I like to do. Chin checking, yeah. I like to, uh, when I eat them, they know they've been it. Your style then, a perfect place to start. You know, like I said, you've got the lyrics, but I haven't seen you perform. And sometimes you do get people say things and they're not really about that. Yeah, yeah. What makes you about what you say you are? Yeah, I like to back up what I'm saying. Um, you know, I've won all four fights on points, but I can punch and I've, I've boxed tough opponents and they've all said to me afterwards, like, you know, you, you can, you've got some punch, haven't you? And I'm like, yeah, you know, through years of sparring bigger lads and, you know, even as a 15, 16 year old, I was sparring these novice pros because they wanted, they wanted that work kind of thing. And without being overconfident, I think there's a thin line between arrogance and confidence, but I put the work in over years and I believe in my abilities what I can do, um, and when I show up on day, I truly believe there's, there's, not, there's not people that are going to beat me. They're not there. I'm, I can do a lot. I can fight, I can box. I'm fast, I'm strong. I just need to show up. Turning over pro, like you said, you know, when you was an amateur, you were sparring, you know, the novice pros. You, you are now yeah, yeah, yeah. that novice pro. What was it, what put the taste in your mouth for you to say, you know what, no more amateur now. This, I want this to be my career. Even when I was an amateur, 12, 13, 14 year old, we always said, you're going to be better suited as a pro. My style, I like to sit down on my shorts, you know, nice, slow, not slow pace, but not that amateur. Blah, 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 blah. That's never been me. I like to sit on my shorts and pick my shorts and, you know, I don't waste a lot of shorts. I've always been the same in that regard. Um, and I've always wanted to be a professional boxer. Since I started boxing, I've, I've, I've like, I can't wait to turn pro, I can't wait to turn pro. I should have turned pro at 19 and I had a bad hand injury. I should have then turned pro 2021, COVID. Just as we kind of arranged everything for my meetings, you know, COVID came, that put us back. So as soon as COVID were done, we were like, right, we need to turn over now, you know. Uh, I kept fit throughout COVID, running and things like that. So as soon as it was time, we turned over. And the, I always say you can't rush magic. And, you know, if you force things, they break. So everything for a reason. All these sayings, they seem to be coming true. So it's, it's a good time right now to be where I'm at. Getting out on the, the shows, um, the, the, 
there's quite a few boxers, as you know, out there. Um, fighters waiting around for a, a long time. We see that even, say, for example, on the, you know, the bigger cards. So how do you find it, like, you know, having that patience to, like, wait until it's your turn and then, say, for example, having the opportunity to fight on somewhere like GBM? Yeah, it, yeah, it, it's hard. It's hard, but you can't, like we just said, you can't rush magic and everything's got to come at the right time. You know, everything for a reason. I truly, truly believe that. Same. I had my first fight uh, April 2022. Um, okay. So the, I've been pro nearly two years. This will be my fifth. Maybe I've had six by then, you know. So this year I'm going to be busy. This is the year where, you know, I need to be busy. Um, but we're not rushing anything. I've changed gyms. Uh, halfway through last year, so obviously that took a bit of adapting, you know, as soon as we had settled, it only took a couple of months, I adapt very quick, we got a fight, you know, then I, I boxed in October, it was Christmas, perfect, so since I've been at this, at the Ingalls gym, I have been, I have been busy, you know, I've just probably been there, it seems a long time, but I haven't, when you put it like that, do you know what I mean, I've only been there a few months, this is my second fight, so we're keeping busy, I'd like to keep this pace, keep active this year, get the wins, I'm looking forward to it. Being part of, you know, it's, it's a legacy gym, isn't it? Um, obviously, you had the late, great Brendan uh, with the fighters that he's pushed out. Then you've got Dominic, you know, a, a, a really straight talking guy. Doesn't mince his words. He will look you straight in the eye and tell you what he thinks. Making the decision to go to a gym where you're going to be put through your paces and if you're rubbish, you're out. That's it. That's that decision making. That's it. Shit or bust. Yeah. And that... and, and that's how, you know, that's how this sport's got to be. You can't, you can't sugarcoat things in this sport. Bottom line, I always say in this sport, you can fight or you can't. That is the bottom, bottom line. But you have to put the work in. And um, Dom's very straightforward like that. And I like that, you know, you, you've got in, uh, Luca Ingle up at the gym who's coming through coaching. He's very like that as well, you know. You've got the guidance of, like, Kid Galahad there. Straight down the pipe. He's been there and done it. Do you know what I mean? So if you're not listening to them people's advice... It's not for you. So I, everything they say, I take on board. I appreciate what they say. I respect what they say. And uh, I listen and learn every time I train. That listening and learning, uh, you're going from amateur to pro. And like you said, it took you a while to bed in. When you go to like a, a new trainer, we see people moving about. And maybe I would say probably more than they should do. That bedding in process, how is it then for you to like change a style, a type that you may have had? Um, to get better, to actually adapt to how the trainer sees your potential and, and him developing your style that you've already got? Yeah, for me personally, um, pe people have always thought, I was from the Ingalls gym, my style, they've always thought that because, you know, I'm a bit flashy and, you know, I, I, I can box or I can, you know, people have always thought that, but I'm actually not. And when I've gone up there, I, I'm picking up things all the time, you know, like, oh, this is why they do this. And I always think they've not had to change my style, they've just tweaked it. They, and they still are, they're still tweaking it. You know, I've not been there too long, five, six months. They, they're just tweaking it. And if it wasn't a good place for me to be, I wouldn't be there. You know, I take that decision and I won't be there. But everything's working out right. The training's good, the sparring's good. I've, my last performance was good. So, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying that and it's nice to pick up new things. The process and, and being active and, and having GBM in your corner that, you know, listening to Izzy at the top table, he seemed really, like, he's passionate anyway, but you could see that he was, he really enjoyed introducing you to all of us. Yeah. I've known Izzy a long, long time. A long time. Um, the gym I started boxing at a long time ago, Izzy was there when he turned pro. I went to Izzy's debut. I can't remember his debut. I said at the last press conference of the last fight, his entrance sticks out in my mind. I can't remember it. You know, he come out with some banger music and it turned into baseline and it was great. And I always thought, this is how I want my entrance to be, my debut. And it were like that. So I've known Izzy a long time. He, he's, he's a family friend and um, he's passionate about boxing. You know, he's been there. He's been where we are. He's been there. He's had to sell the tickets. He's had to put the work in. He's had to do the media. He's been there and he's done it so... And he's still young as a promoter in the game. The passion is there and it's, it's great to see the, the entire GBM team, you know. I know a lot of the guys now and they, they're passionate about what they do. You know, they put the time and the effort in and it's, it's good to be around. 
We do love to hear that because quite often or not, you do get, you know, the smaller hall shows and, and I'll be the first to admit it because I cover the big ones. I don't always get to the small ones, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's really refreshing to come here and hear the fighters talk about is he almost is like an extension to a boxing family is not just the promoter yeah he uh it means what he says and he puts the work in and is is a boxing fan i think if you're involved in boxing from being a fighter to a judge to a referee to a promoter you need to be a fan of boxing and he is a fan of boxing eddie is the same he's a fan of boxing frank warren is a fan of boxing all these others what you see coming and going they're doing it for one thing, but these people that are fans of boxing, you know, they want boxing to do well, and I believe he's one of those people. Talking about doing well, what can the fans expect from you on February the 9th? I know you said March the 9th then, but not February. Did I say? Did I say? No, it's me. Oh. Me. I, I keep saying March. I haven't been hit that much, I wouldn't say. No. Um, no, you're going to. It's a, on the whole, it's a very good show. It's a very good show. They've got. Top prospects on it, some good 50-50 fights. From my point of view, you're going to see some, some hot stepping yeah. and some very repping and some chin checking, you know, and some mullet wearing, you know. But do you like it? Thank you. A lot of people don't like it, but you know what? Fuck them. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, do you. But um, no, you, I'm going to put on a good performance. I truly believe that camp's going really well. Uh, I'm really fit. I'm on fire already. And people know... What people know when they come and watch me, they're going to have a good night, but they don't know what I'm going to do. I don't even know what I'm going to do until I get in ring and have a feel. So, you know, come, enjoy it. I know I'll be enjoying it. We love that. And on that note, we shall call it quits, but not forever, just for today. So all the best on February the 9th. Thank you very much for your time. Shout Thank you. Social media. Shout out my social media. So uh, Instagram, Red X Johnson. Can I shout out my sponsors? Because I won't be here without them, you know. Course, they're uh, really important. They are. I just want to shout out PNU. They've just jumped on board. Supposed to be with some clothing and things like that. So follow those on Instagram. I'll be tagging them on my Instagram. Um, Composite Centre, RCP Electrical, Empire Pro Tape, all the English gym. You know, thank you guys very much. Thank you for the love and support, everyone. I appreciate it. And thank you for you guys, you know, for giving us this media outlet. It's, it is appreciated and people don't say that enough. We love it. All the best and lovely to meet you. And it, from one red to another, all the best. And stay ready. That's what we say. People say I'm toxic and honestly, I don't care.